Hello everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to solve the 3x3 original Rubik's Cube. So, in my cube, pink replaces a red on the original. So, here I go. The first step to solving this is uh, the white cross. This is an easy method, probably my favorite, but it takes long, so I don't use this method. But it once you get this mastered, you can try figuring out your own methods. This is probably the easiest step. So the first step to doing this is to get the white cross. What you do is you just get white on all of these pieces. All the, the middle piece and the edge pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The pieces don't have to be in the right position right now, but they will have to be later. So I have two pieces in the right position. This white and this white. So the pink white and the green white. So if you how you know they're right? You can know these are right if you have the two pinks going down from one right and two greens going down from the other. There, if you don't have the white cross already, there are going to be two ones that are wrong. So right now I have the blue side wrong and the orange side wrong. So what you do is you have to switch them. So how I do it is I move this white piece down so it's on the right face. And then I move it um, just to the back row. So it would be replacing this piece, so it's in line with this piece. You move it up where the blue was, so now you have the orange in the right position, but the blue isn't. So you just move the blue to the empty edge piece, and you have all the pieces in the right position for the white cross. If you didn't understand this, comment below what went wrong for you and I'll try to answer your questions. So the next step is to solve the white face. As you can see I have one white piece on the top layer but it's in the wrong position because this is the orange side but it has green on that side so I would move it down to the bottom. The bottom row is where you want all the white pieces to be but you don't have to do it right now. You just have to have one on there to start. So this white piece has green underneath it. So I moved it to the green side. After you do that, you can move it up to the correct position and you have um, the green and pink or red piece in the right position with white on top. So that part is right, and I have to leave it alone now. So this piece is not also on the bottom, and blue is underneath it. So I get it to the blue side. I then move it up again, and I have that part too. But now I come into a situation that my white piece isn't on the bottom. This is the move to do that. So you move it down. Then you move the bottom layer to the side and move the right back up. In this case, I got both of them up to the bottom layer, but not many cases you will. So I move, now um, I find what's, what's under this white piece and it's orange. So I'm already on the orange side, so I can just move it up. And the last piece, you don't really have to, um, look what's underneath it because it's the only piece left. So I move it up and I have the white layer completed with one row of each color other than yellow and one other piece beneath that. So after this step is completed you flip the white over to the bottom so you don't mess up this layer. Now, this will take some remembering to do because it has an algorithm to it. So, 
this is how you do it. You get a upside down uppercase T. In this case, you have to get like pink or green on this side. I have pink right now. So you have to look what colors on top of the top pink. So I have green on top. Green is over to the right side of pink. So you move it to the left to start. You move the up face to the left. Then what you do is you move the right face because the green is on the right face up then you move the up face right and you move the right face back down so you have these two pieces with the green on top and the pink right here now what you do is you need it the two bottom rows to be completed of each color so you're gonna want this piece to get right here so what I do is I move it out of the way, so I move the up face right, and I twist the front layer to the right side, and I move these two pieces back to the original place, and then I move the completed white row down to the bottom, or just the front to the right. So that is one possibility you could get here. The other possibility is, um, well, this is the same one, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So up, left, right, up, up, right, right, down, up, right, front to the, um, front to the left. The top or up to the left and then you bring it back down. I have the completed green two rows so I'm done with the green part of this step. Now this is the other case you will have. So I got the upside down T with pink again but I have blue now on top. So what you do is you move the up face to the right. Then you move the left face up then you move the up face left, move the left face down, you move the up face to the right, you move the front to the right, and then you move those two pieces back, and then move the completed white layer down. So now I have the completed pink and the completed green. Now I have one more piece I have to get in the right position. I have it on top here. So I have blue and orange. What you do now is you do the same one I did last time. So up to the right, left up, up to the left, left down, up to the left, front to the right, up right, and the completed left layer down. I mean white layer down. So I have all the bottom two layers. If, if you have a yellow, if you have all yellows on top and you can't complete a T with one of the colors other than yellow on top of it, then you have to do the same moves that you do that um, just one of these two algorithms that I did just now. So. I'm done with this step. The next step, there are two possibilities you could get. You, what well, I have the possibility where it has three of the edge pieces. I have one on top, one in the middle, and one on the left. You might only end up with one middle actually, but then you can just do the same method and you'll come up with another one of the two possibilities that I'm going to show you. If you already have the yellow cross, you can skip this step and get ahead. So the algorithm to do this is front to the right. Then you move the top left. 
you move the right up, you move the top left, you move the right down, and then you move the front left. And I have the cross. So now I'm going to show you the other possibility you will get. The other possibility to the yellow cross step is getting a straight line across the middle. You have to face it this way in order to get it. And you have to face the last step the way I faced it last time in order to do it, that one too. So you face it with it going across the middle, not like this, but like that. So you do these moves now. You move front to the right, up, right up, up to the left, right down, up to the right, and the front to the left. Now I have the cross. Now in this cross step there are lots of different things that could happen and I'll show you all of them. So this is the first one you can do. So you do the same for algorithm for each method but you have to face them the right way. So you're gonna end up wanting two yellows right here and the rest of the cross so this piece wouldn't be there that's what you want this is probably the easiest algorithm there is to solving it all it is is facing it this way up to the left down to the left well up left up to top to the left twice and back down this is another possibility you may get so just a normal yellow cross so what you do is you face it the way that there are no yellows in the top row of one of the other colors, not the yellow face. And you do the same algorithm again. So this is what you would want to get it to end up like. You face it, so the one yellow piece on top would be right to the left of you. And then you go right up, top left, right down, up, left, right up, and then up, left, twice. And you have the white face. Now the next two steps are the last steps of solving the Rubik's Cube. They are sort of hard to um, memorize but they are easy to do. So the first step is you may actually have no corners of a side. I have orange corners. If you have all the corners like blue, blue, pink, pink, and then um, green, green, and orange, orange, um, then you can skip this step and go to the other one. So what you do is you put these two correct corners to the back face. If you don't have any, you can face it uh, any way you want and you'll have to do this um, just an extra time after. So the algorithm for this is right down, front to the right, right down again. Then you need to go back to the left twice. So it will end up looking like this. Then you go right up. Then you will go front to the left then you go right down and back to left twice again and then the completed yellow row back up to the top. Now I have all the corners in the correct position. Now you are at the final step of the Rubik's Cube hopefully and um, I also have a one correct side. If you don't have a correct side you can face it anyway but if you do have the correct side you put it to the back again. Then you do these moves. You go front anyway twice. I do it to the right twice. Then you go, I have a blue middle right here. So it was up there and you want, the blue is on this side. 
So you move the um the up row to the left. In the other case, you'll move it to the right, but not in mine. So then you move up uh, left down and right down. Then you move uh, the front face two times anyway. And then you move the left up, right up. And in my case, I have to move it to the left because that's the way this blue wants to go. And then you solve the Rubik's Cube. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe. And just comment anything you liked or disliked about this video. And see you next time.